and when you see a passion within someone else, that shared passion again, oh my God, this person's passionate about our product and what they're doing. That makes the CS person passionate about it or the salesperson that sold it to them or people like us that speak with our customers you know, on a daily basis. And it's just sharing in that belief together, which makes a great experience for the customer. A relationship with the right referral partner could be a game changer for any B2B company. So what if you could reverse engineer these relationships at a moment's notice? Start a podcast, invite potential referral partners to be guests on your show, and grow your referral network faster than ever. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands. And I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. My name is Ethan Butte, and I head up the customer experience series here on the show. This week's guest is a longtime friend of mine, Steve Passanelli, Chief Marketing Officer at BombBomb, my co-author on Rehumanize Your Business, a book about how personal videos accelerate sales and improve customer experience. He goes deep on audience, on shared belief, and a number of other great communication and sales tips. I hope you enjoy the time I spent with Steve Passanelli. Here, I've got a longtime friend, a gentleman I have known for years. He was a BombBomb customer before he became our chief marketing officer, a role he served in for more than four years. Prior to that, he spent a dozen years leading outside sales teams for Realtor.com. He's traveled all over the place. He's given thousands of presentations. He's my co-author on Rehumanize Your Business, the definitive guide to simple personal videos to accelerate sales and improve customer experience. Steve Passanel. Welcome to the Customer Experience Podcast. Thank you for having me, Ethan. I, I, you know, as being the bonus, you know that 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 makes me it makes me happy that that, that I'm the bonus of the <laughs> of the session. Totally. Yeah. I mean, every Tuesday you're going to get something new, but uh, we'll surprise you once a month with a bonus. And uh, thanks for joining me on this first one, Steve. Yeah, I'm going to start with you. To put it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start with you the same way I start with everybody because I think over time, this is going to create a really interesting body of information. I'll just ask you to, to define or talk about customer experience from your perspective. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, a lot lately, and I don't know if I fully have this, th- this concept fleshed, fleshed out, but it's something that, that I believe, and I'm starting to believe more and more as, as we begin thinking about it this way for, for our company. But customer experience comes down to the exploration of a shared belief. And no matter where you are, no matter where the customer is in that process, and this even spreads down to the employees, but it's it's exploring a potential shared belief or an actual shared belief. And all the touch points throughout the entire life cycle is the exploration, either the advancement or the regression of that shared belief uh, based off of your actions and interactions that people have with the individuals in your company. So for example, you have BombBomb and we believe that if people are in front of People more often they would do more business, you know, through through video, and so that shared belief is in all of our marketing materials. It's in our messaging that we send out. It's in our ads, and that's what we use to hook people to engage with our brand, right? And so, if people are interested in that shared belief, and we get them to believe the same thing, then they start exploring down the waterfall uh, the elements that lead lead up to that. It's like, yeah, I am, you know, I am an important part of the process. I'm an important part of the sales or CS process. Now, let me explore this company in terms of 
how they can benefit me, the process in which they can benefit my, you know, my business, the price to value comparison and all these other elements come in as you go. And then when they speak to a salesperson, does that salesperson share the same belief or or are the people on the same page? And then when they go back and look at the marketing material, does that convey the same message? And then when they buy the product, you know, and they have onboarding and they begin using the product, it's the exploration still of that belief and how well you do as a company to come along beside them and guide them along that exploration. And then even when, if they're about to churn, it's like, do they still believe fundamentally in what your product offers or are you doing a bad job throughout the customer experience in building that up and getting them to understand the value that you're offering? And so I know it was a really long answer, but it's, I'm really believing in the exploration of a shared belief. I love it. I'm thinking about some of the really, really early adapters of our technology and our way of believing, seeing, and practicing in the world using video to get face-to-face. I'm thinking about some of those really early adopters who they just got it, right? Like they yeah. already had that belief. They maybe already right. had that frustration and saw a better way and, they, and, and we just happened to fill the gap for them. Whereas other people we interact with need to understand the belief and then start to identify with it. I, I, it's a really interesting language. I love it. And yeah, and, w- and when you see a passion within someone else, that shared passion again, oh my God, this person's passionate about our product and what they're doing. That makes the CS person passionate about it or the salesperson that sold it to them or people like us that speak with our customers, you know, on a daily basis. And it's just sharing and, you know, that, that belief together, which makes a great experience for the customer. So you talked about belief. You talked about a shared belief shared across employees, communicated clearly and consistently, and then customers identifying with and being drawn into living out and or you also offered regression, walking away from the belief because maybe it's not true for them anymore. It reminds me of an idea that I know you're you're really big on recently. We've been using this language a lot and talking about the work that we do that we are repelled by confusion and attracted to clarity. When we are confused, we're repelled as people, as humans. And when things are nice and simple and clear, we're attracted to it. Can you go on that for just a minute? Because I think it's related to the importance of a consistent communication of, of the belief to be shared. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. <laughs> that comes from Donald Miller in the Story Brand book and their, their live classes. And that's what that's what he states over and over and over again in his podcast. And it's funny, I am so attracted to some of the, so their messaging and the things that they are doing over there at StoryBrand. And why is it? It's because we have a shared belief, right? And that's what I believe. I, I didn't quite articulate it in the same way that, that Donald did, and he did a much better job. And, and now I'm articulating it in that same way. But it's through that shared belief that, that attracted me so much to, to that message in the first place. And it's absolutely true. You know, your brain is designed to survive and thrive and also reduce the amount of calories because your brain, uh, despite being only 2% of your body weight, actually takes up 20% of your resting metabolic. I don't think I'm going to get this right. uh, Metabolic rate. And so 20%, 2% of your body rate, but it takes up 20% of your calories is is a better way to say it. And so it requires a massive amount of calories. And so when the brain has to think too hard, or you're trying to make it jump through too many hoops, then what's going to happen? Well, that's confusion. That's repelling, right? And how easy and how quickly can you convey what you want to say, your your product's value proposition, how you help the customer, how you help them solve problems, the faster that, that you can say that and communicate that, then that's your customer is going to be drawn into that to that clarity. And so our messaging, and I don't know how deep you want to get into this topic, but everything from, you know, our emails we've been revamping to our website we've been revamping. And and some of it is just so plain simple. It's like we try to get so fancy with the headline of, you know, of our websites. And we we try to make ourselves seem smart and fancy by having a, a statement when people just really want to know what the heck you do at the, very, at the very top of your website. And it's like changing your mindset of not being fancy and just being straight and direct and forward. And that's what people enjoy because you're helping them conserve calories and survive and thrive. I love it. It reminds me of um, another 
lesson we got out of this kind of exploring the themes of the story brand is that, you know, this tendency to want to be clever and, yeah. and fancy and fussy with our, our design and our language and the way we position things. And uh, I think Donald said it this way at one point, look at this fancy riddle I've made for you. I hope you enjoy it, right? Like <laughs> trying to figure out what I'm offering you. And, and that, that comes from a position of weakness and that we want to show how smart and clever we are when in fact the strongest thing you can do is often A, challenging and B, perceived as boring, which is being as straightforward as possible. Yeah, and to swing that back to like overall customer experience, it's, it's applicable throughout every interaction that your company has. If someone phones in because they have a problem with your, your system or your product or your service for that matter, they don't want a convoluted answer. They want an answer as, quick, as, as quickly as possible that solves their problem. And if you look at it the same way when you're trying to sell your product online, you know, they don't want a fancy long answer. You, you, you want to distill your messaging down to the absolute bare necessity that conveys the value and the problem that you overcome for, for your customers as quickly and easily you know, as possible. And even in, in your you know, interdepartmental relationships and the relationships within the office, people just want answers faster and they want clarity on everything that they do. So it's hard. It's hard, right? Just like uh, photography. I took a uh, I took a photography class from one of the top 10 wedding photographers in the world. And, and it's the, the same concept. He said the best photos out there are the photos that remove all the unnecessary items and stick with the, the main subject and make the main subject stand out. And it's extremely difficult to remove all of the unnecessary items. And that's perfection. That is perfection. I, you know, in, in scheduling this with you, I wanted to make sure to tap into something that I would argue you're very uniquely expert at it. You're one of the best speakers I've seen present. You've done it thousands of times. And so I thought for, for listeners, you know, whether you're presenting to your own team or function or department, or whether you're presenting to an executive team, or whether you're presenting to customers, whether it's by webinar, in person, on phone, on Zoom, whatever the case may be in a video email, I would love to, to get into just a couple value points in terms of helping someone who maybe is not an accomplished or experienced presenter maybe get a little bit better. So talk about your audiences. Let's go with a live audience, whether it's, uh, and you can separate this if you want to in person or in online. Think about your audience as a customer. What do you, you know, as you're, as you're preparing for a presentation, what are you trying to do in terms of delivering an experience for the audience slash the customer? We said audience a, a number of times, and that's that's actually the answer. And it's truly understanding your audience and why they're there, and and what they would like to to learn. A lot of people will speak, you know, in different webinars or live events, but they don't know who their audience is is comprised of or the struggles that they they might be trying to overcome in their you know in their day to day day to day business. And so, at first, if you understand your your audience and who's going to be there, you can craft clear and better better messaging that will help them. And that's, that's what ultimately you're trying to do. You know, if you look at getting on the stage, I, most of the time I'm selling a product most of the time when, when I get on the stage, but I don't start with the premise of how can I sell the most products? That's not the question that I ask myself first. The question I ask myself first is how can I be a value to the audience that I'm speaking to? And once you identify all the different points you can be of value, then you can figure out where you can intertwine you know, a product because the product is helping them in some way. Because you're, most people that get on stage are always trying to sell something. You know, very rarely, you don't, you, you don't try to sell anything, whether it be a book or your product or your service or just the continued exploration of a, of a particular topic. So understanding your, you know, your audience solving a problem for them and figuring and making that your thrust and the main goal for the presentation, even though what you might really want to do is, is sell a bunch of products and then making it clear. And we can get super tactical. I don't know if you want to go sure. that far. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a few specifics. So two things come to mind right off the bat and it's, it's the beginning of your presentation. When you start your presentation, it's okay to be a bit unclear and to wind that back 
and be totally clear with what's going to happen with the rest of the presentation. And so being unclear opens up a, a story loop. It catches them off guard. It, you, know, you might want to start off with a story that doesn't seem like it relates to the topic that you go to. And rather than getting on stage and, and popping on stage and saying, Hi, thank you so much for having me here. I am so excited to speak with you. Is this mic on, by the way? You know, that, that first impression is terrible. So getting on stage and not even introducing yourself, has, uh, this is bad to say, but a lot of times I forget to even tell people who I am. That's why I always make sure I have it on the slide behind because I hop on stage and I get right into a story. Like, here's my dad's signature and I'll have my dad's signature on the, on the screen behind me. And people are like, I came to a class about video. Why are we looking at his father's signature? And there's a tie in there, but it keeps people engaged. It opens up a story loop for them. And you're different in the first few minutes of the presentation than the other presenters. But after you do something like that, it's, it's like the juxtaposition between something unexpected and then something very expected. Because right after that, you need to tell them exactly what the presentation is going to be about and exactly what they're going to walk away from the presentation with. That also keeps them engaged throughout. Going back to clarity and the experience that people are having with you while you're on stage, people want to know what they're going to learn 45 minutes into the presentation. And if you're not opening up story loops and telling them like, hey, here are the three topics that we're going to go over. Here's why these topics are going to benefit you. And here's what you're going to be able to do after watching this presentation. That's a three-step plan that makes this presentation extremely valuable and draws them in because they know the benefit right out of the gate. And then you tell them what you're going to tell them. And then at the end, you say, okay, here's what I promised that we would do. Did we do this? And you loop it back around. But while you're going through those examples, you can open up those story loops. And I'm going to give you the four best ways that you can get people to open your email, or I'm going to give you the five best ways to get people to play your video. We'll talk about that in the third section. And it, you know, it keeps people engaged throughout the process and makes it clear at the same time. I love it. Some really good tips in there. If you missed it, hit that 30 second back and, and bounce back because there are some really gold nuggets in there about the way to structure your presentation, the way to think about your audience. We've actually presented on stage together. That uh, was probably one of the best presentations I've ever been a part of because of the, that was the first time. It was one day at Bomb and we were like, okay, let's just present together. That was amazing. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was really fun. And we, um, in this a little bit counter to what you just shared, uh, when we got to the point of straight selling a product, yeah, that's true. Was it, was it an ovation or was it a standing ovation? I don't remember. But there was a few people that it wasn't, not everyone had a standing ovation, but we definitely had a few. Yeah, it's so crazy. Um, that was when we released a uh, video in Gmail to that particular community. But uh, we, we solved the pro we solved the problem there, and it was a shared belief, and it was a problem that they knew that they had, and that that's what caused that, right? Yes. Totally, like a strong physical and emotional reaction. It was amazing. So we've been on stage together. We've done a ton of videos together. We've done some video training series together, like some do like an hour of training content, you know, uh, with some back and forth. And so we've co-authored a book called Rehumanize Your Business, How Personal Videos Accelerate Sales and Improve Customer Experience. Talk a little bit about that, a unique format to teach people about the, the, fundamental flaw of relying exclusively on plain typed out text by giving them 300 pages of plain typed out text. And there were some beautiful <laughs> illustrations. Our design team did a great job. But talk a little bit about the book. Why a book? Why does it exist? Why should someone participate with it? What do you, what do you love about it? And what's your relationship with books in general? <laughs> Those are whole, that's a lot yeah. of questions. Uh, quick, well, first, I, I want to say... Yes, we, we co-authored, but luckily for all the readers of this amazing book, Ethan actually did the authoring and the, and the typing, the actual typing of the message. I had a great time you know, with Ethan brainstorming topics, but Ethan is one of the most brilliant and amazing, and he would never say this, so I want to give him the props that he deserves. You know, we would talk about topics, we'd brainstorm, we would outline, and then Ethan would sit down and, and just in the most eloquent way put everything that we talked about into words. And I think the book's amazing because I see so much of your fingerprint on the book and your passion you know, for the book and the passion for video and people getting face to face. And that really is the most exciting. And I, I told Ethan this, but like that was one of the most exciting several months working with Ethan on a daily basis and, and feeling his passion come through in words because you are 
one of the best writers I've ever met. So thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one, that was fun for me. Two, you know, it's like a <laughs> it's like a paradox, I guess. You know, as you mentioned, talking about video in a book format, but people learn in different ways, right? And the video that we talk about is fundamentally different in the delivery than a video that would be about this book. Because the main premise here is, well, it's not battling, you use both, but we talk about relationships through video and marketing through video. And if we were to take all the information that we put into this book and made a video, it would strictly be about marketing through video. And where we really focused and dialed it in within the book is short form video messaging, quick messages to relay something more effectively, relay or convey emotion, connect in the sales or, or CS process on a one-to-one emotional level, not a mass marketing piece. And so that, that's one way that the book does provide you know, a better format because the book is all about these short form video messages, not three hour, four hour, seven hour. I mean, if we were to do the book in a video, it would be an eight hour video, right? Uh, and so, so it was fun putting it down into words and really thinking it through and it allows people to see a process you know, on the page. Some people are visual and they need to see the process and see the triggers of when to use video throughout their day-to-day -day business. And we break it down into four parts of, of why they want to use video, when to use video, how to use video, and, and uh, getting better results. And those four segments right there, it's just a nice little transition from one topic to the other. And I, and I do think the book for a format is a great way to convey that and get people excited. Now, of course, we have amazing digital training assets online where people can then watch the videos and then get the guides and they work hand in hand. So it's not just a book. You're getting something much greater than a book that you can sit down and read and reread over and over again when you need some motivation, but you're getting those digital assets with the videos so you can continue your education. Did yeah. I answer your question? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it was basically, basically that was my long-winded way of saying, hey, talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> so we did this thing. Talk about that. Yeah, it's really fun. I think of it a little bit as a celebration. I mean, we've come so far with and for and through our customers. So we have about 40 different customers mentioned in it, yeah. specific stories and examples. And it's just, it was, it was fun for me too. I really enjoyed working with you and, and taking the very best from the stories that we teach, the examples that we share, the blog posts, the webinars, the stage presentations, the frameworks, the structures for what do you do? What do you do when you send a video email and no one opens it? What do you do if they open it, but don't play the video? What do they do if they play the video, but they don't reply? All these things that we've learned over, well, it's more than a decade that we've been doing this together. Uh, yeah. in total. And so, uh, yeah, it's really fun. I, I, the other thing I think too, is that it, in a way it meets people where they are, right? Like a lot of people who are very comfortable or reliant on text are comfortable working with text and consuming it in addition to producing it. And so it was fun to try to capture the spirit of the, of a video or even like this, a live conversation in the written word. So yeah, it was great. And I will say it would have been a much more boring and academic book w without your participation. <laughs> that would be much more readable and, <laughs> and really value-laden. I mean, you really challenged throughout the whole thing, pressing in on, you know, where's the reader value here? Hey, it's been too long since. Hey, we should inject some of this here kind of thing. And so it's a, it's a, um, yeah, it's teamwork. Because it's just a longer presentation. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same methodology, right? It's the same thought process and getting in the book. And just like on stage, like if, if someone's not writing something down or someone's not laughing every three to five minutes at a minimum, then you need to inject some more value in that. And it's the same thing with the book. If someone doesn't have an aha moment or writing something down, you know, with X amount of time, then you got to provide some value, keep them engaged another great presentation tip right there. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Keep an eye on the audience. Sometimes it's hard, right? So just going back to presenting when you're up on stage and all the lights are on and let's say you're in a room of say a bigger room, let's say a room of, you know, four or 500 people to, you know, beyond that, like any, any room that's four or 500 people is going to be lit in such a way that it's hard to see the audience. Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with that? 
How do you, how do you, cause I, cause I know, I know from watching you that you do interact with the audience, even if it's not in like a really direct overt explicit way. I knew there's a lot of interaction there and you draw from that and you look for that audience give back or engagement. How do you do that with all those massive lights on? Yeah, well, you, you need to get a, you need to get some audible feedback. Then, of course, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times you can still see these days people hold up their their phones, and you can see the phones. You can see little reflections off the the shiny phones that people are holding up to take photos, and that counts as one of those three to five minute elements. But it's how, it's how you start the presentation too, and getting people to respond to you quickly. Another, you know, a, another nice tip is get some type of interaction or agreement or audience members saying things aloud as soon as you start the presentation within the first several minutes. Because if you wait a half hour and you try to get the audience to participate with you a half hour in, it's going to be hard. But if you hit them with something provocative right off the bat, you told them a story, you started your presentation differently, and then you got them to agree with you about something and you say, give me a aha uh-huh if you believe this. And they'll say, aha, uh-huh, right Right out of the gate, you got them to, to verbalize, you know, some responses for you. And that will continue throughout the entire presentation. And the experience, tying us all back to experience, is going to be better for them because every time that they do something different, every time you switch topics, their brain starts paying attention again. Every time they say something, it's like a restart and their brain starts paying attention again. Or every time they laugh, it's a, it's a pause and a restart and their brain starts paying attention again. And so after you get one of those moments, what you say directly after is is the thing that the people are going to remember so you can strategically place those throughout now i know we're going late no that was great i like i love that you wove a shared belief in there you also kind of did a drive-by on something that we talk about in a variety of ways which is that every email you send trains people to open or delete your next email and that's what you're really offering there it's the same thing with the book right like every sentence or every paragraph is what is going to draw someone through and these moments of engagement where you draw the attention back to you as a, as a presenter resets people and draws them back into the presentation again it's really good stuff hey as you well know relationships are our number one core value here at bomb bomb and we work that out here on the customer experience podcast as well so i want to give you a chance as we're wrapping up here to thank or mention someone who's had a positive impact on your life or your career okay. and a company who you think is doing customer experience really well okay <laughs> at the risk of, of of sounding too cheesy but it's you know connor and darren were the founders of bomb bomb for believing in me so much and bringing me over to the team. They had a major, major impact. You know, I grew so much at BombBomb in the first like two years than I did in the previous like, five years that I was doing the same thing each and every day. And it was a lot of marketing. There was a lot of sales, but it was the same thing with the same, you know, with the same group and then doing something entirely different and having the support even through the successes and, and the failures and still having that support throughout the entire process and working as a team, like the team environment and the you know introduction to the rest of the team and you like that bomb bomb has, you know, bomb bomb and the people at bomb bomb and of course, and the co-founders have really been my inspiration and people that I want to thank. It's so. awesome. And I agree. And I'm glad yeah. you're here. Talk about a company. Some people give more than one, but a company that, that you've had a really good experience with someone that comes to mind. <laughs> This is a little embarrassing. I, I like boots. <laughs> Ethan, you know this. I mean, you've known this for. I like shoes, but boots in general. For some reason, I really dig boots. And so Taft is an online company. It's a direct-to-consumer company. Provides an amazing experience. And not just through sometimes when I buy a pair of boots for them or a pair of shoes, I get a nice little handwritten note. So there's a, a, an awesome... You know, it's an awesome feeling when, when you know that someone sat down and they say, oh, I hope you enjoy your new such and such shoes. You know, let us know if you have any questions, like when you get the box in the mail, like that's amazing. But also the experience that they have, the, the reason why I'm, I'm so fanatical about the brand and the company is their, their social media. You know, the founder comes on all the time. He shares his family, his, you know, his daughter like comes in and they do these Instagram posts 
about how they choose the shoes and how they make the, the boots and, and the people and the customers. And it's all about the people at the company and their plight. And it's just so awesome to, to be invited you know, into, into the story and have that shared story with them because, hey, I got a family too. And hey, we're building something special over here as well. And hey, you make an awesome product at the same time. It's, they're, they're doing everything right. That's for sure. <laughs> T-A-F-T, Taft. Yeah. Yeah, T-A-F-T, T- yeah, Taft Original, I think, is, is the website. Awesome. Love it. Now, I already know the answers to these because we communicate all the time. But for the folks who are listening, how can someone connect with you or connect with BombBomb or check out the book? Yes, that's bombbomb.com for bombbomb. The books at bombbomb.com slash book. And you can get more information about the book, the value the book provides in a really clear and concise way that hopefully matches your beliefs and your goals at the, at the same time. Uh, anybody can connect with me you know, on Facebook or on Twitter. And it's uh, Steve Passanelli. P-A-C-I-N-E-L-L-I. So it's fb.com slash Steve Passanelli or at Steve Passanelli on Twitter. Or I have Instagram. I think I'm Steve Passanelli at Instagram. I, I'm an Instagram lurker, like for Taft and you, and I follow the stuff that you do. I don't post that often to Instagram, but I am a lurker. So feel free to, to connect on Instagram if you want a lurker, I guess. <laughs> nice. I appreciate it. This was fun. Uh, We talk all the time, but we don't always record it, probably for the best. But uh, I hope folks found value. I know I loved uh, a lot of your presentation tips. I really appreciate your time and I hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks for having me on. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you picked up some great tips from Steve on communicating and connecting more effectively with the people inside and outside your organization. If you want to learn more about video, check out the new book, Rehumanize Your Business, How Personal Videos Accelerate Sales and Improve Customer Experience. And if you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more like it, search The Customer Experience Podcast in iTunes. You can also learn more by visiting bombbomb.com slash podcast. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.